Cybersecurity defense in today's day and age in the modern world usually consists of using an EDR, or an Endpoint Detection and Response Platform. Now, big commercial EDR providers like a Silence or a CrowdStrike or Sentinel One or Huntress or whatever you use oftentimes come with a price tag. In this video, we're going to dive into a free, well, EDR that you could use, but you probably shouldn't because it's for learning and education sake, and use some red team tests, some techniques, some tactics, techniques, and procedures that we might be able to evaluate and judge and assess the function of our EDR. Whatever you use, hopefully this video gives you some tools in your toolkit to be able to make sure your EDR is doing what it should. What we're going to be diving into in this video is a lab, an exercise, an activity, all coming from the Pay What You Can courses offered by Anti-Siphon Training, Black Hills Information Security, and the mastermind that is John Strand. All the great tribe of companies and the incredible work that they do. There's a link in the description if you want to dig more into that, but it is Pay What You Can. You can make this learning completely free if that's what's accessible and affordable for you. Just like we have been in the previous videos, I'm online on GitHub and John Strand's GitHub repositories for his Intro Labs class. He has a navigation navigation markdown file where we could scroll down and zoom in on any specific lab or exercise or activity that we're interested in. And there's so much cool stuff here. In the intro to security section, there is a lesson lab activity on blue spawn. And that's what we're going to be driving down into today. A little bit of background context. Blue spawn is an application tool and program put together by some of the students that were at University of Virginia. They were doing this for, I think, CCDC or one of the other hey, collegiate cyber defense competitions. It's really, really cool but it is not something that you should use for real legitimate production EDR purposes, right? It's for learning. It helps in a CTF, but not something you should put in your actual infrastructure. So what we will do is we will fire up BlueSpawn as our acting EDR and use some of the atomic red team tools and techniques to actually validate our EDRs catching what it should. Note, I'm inside of the pay what you can uh, lab virtual machine that you can download from the beginning of the video. I'll link that just as well. I should probably put out a playlist for this thing, but let me fire up an administrator power PowerShell prompt, because first things first, at least for the sake of the lab, we're going to disable Defender. I'm going to right click and copy this and I will full screen and maximize PowerShell so that I can enter this in. And that's OK. Hey, Defender will be turned off with this even bloody red error message. They note this in the lab. If you get angry red error messages, that's OK. Defender's off. Now we can scroll down, open up a command prompt and start to fire off blue spawn inside of the tools directory here. We could change directory and then we could just use the blue spawn client that is already included, already installed, already set up for you here inside of the virtual machine. We'll end up running this EDR in collection or cursory mode where it's not going to be doing any preventative measures. It's just going to detect some weird behavior or oddball malicious things that we should probably be alerted on. So back in my terminal, let me move to tools. Let me see if I can paste in blue spawn. It is in PowerShell for me currently. So I'm going to use a dot slash to run this. And now blue spawn is doing its thing. It is set up and <laughs> my ASCII art is a little bit too big for the screen here, you'll note that it's setting up monitoring for different types of events. And all of these are tactics or techniques, things that are included in the MITRE ATT&CK framework. If for whatever reason you aren't familiar with the MITRE ATT&CK framework, it is the framework and standard and common talking ground language that we could all speak to get into what threat actors are doing and how they're doing what they're doing. With the MITRE ATT&CK framework, you can look into different kinds of tricks and things that hackers, threat actors, adversaries do, or you can track specific groups, individual threat actors or activity clusters that are tracked by a common name in the security community. Tons and tons of great information here showing what they do, how, why, and when. All part of their tradecraft. These are all things that your EDR application, your platform, should be able to detect and respond to. Uh, we can use Atomic Red Team as another utility to test this. If you aren't familiar with the Atomic Red Team, it is incredible. It is so cool because it's these small atomic, literally like bite-sized validations, like tests, to be able to see, hey, can I detect someone dumping hashes? Can I see someone moving laterally across the network? Can I see someone creating new users or backdoor accounts, services, all these things, and they have so much value and we want to be able to see them working. Let me take a look at the wiki super duper quick because I want to have you see this thing in action. Uh, this is all put together by Red Canary, another incredible and super cool vendor in the space here. But what they do in this little demonstration video is they do some spooky, scary, potentially malicious stuff with the Atomic Red Team. It's all bundled up and like packaged for you so that you can just say, hey, I want to invoke this specific 
test for this technique and for this trick documented by the MITRE ATT&CK framework. And it fires it up, it does it, and then you can see you've made some effect, whether it's modifying files in the file system, changing registry, or doing different unique things. But a threat actor might do. We are emulating the adversary, but we're doing it for all the right reasons so we have a better informed defense. So what we'll do is we'll hop over into the Atomic Red Team folder, change directory in there, install these modules that we might need for dependencies, and then fire it up. One thing to note here is that you shouldn't do this on your real production infrastructure. You should do this in a sandbox environment. You should do this within some testing machines. You should do this with something hooked up to your EDR, maybe just running in like passive mode, non-blocking or alerting mode, so that it can finally finish and complete the whole test, but it's not going to take down whatever production environment systems. It's just for your own validation. So let's get this thing running. I'm going to open up a new tab. I hit Control Shift T on my keyboard. I'm going to paste in to get into the Atomic Red Team folder. Going to go ahead and install the PowerShell YAML modules that we might need for functions here. We can hit A for yes to all. And then finally, we can go ahead and import the module for our invoke atomic red team functionality. And we can just simply run the commandlets now within PowerShell. This is super duper easy. Again, it's all bundled up and wrapped together for you. So you can invoke atomic test all and it'll fire it up. Okay, so now that that is staged, I'm over on the right hand side of the screen going to press the go button to invoke all the atomic red team tests. And then I'm going to see blue spawn over on the left hand side, try to monitor or track or detect all this activity. We'll hit enter here and it says, hey, do you want to do this? Are you sure? You can go ahead and hit yes, I'll hit Y, and then let's see this thing in action here. Here we go, we're running the atomic tests, archive, compressing things, doing any of these specific MITRE attack frameworks, whether it's compressing data within PowerShell, et cetera, et cetera. We'll see this thing run, and I'll let it go for maybe a minute or two. If you actually look back at the lab, they suggest, hey, let it run for maybe 120 seconds, and then kill it, stop the atomic tests with Control C. I've been letting this go for a little bit. You can see it's still doing its uh, action here. I'll scroll up. You can see, man, it was doing some shady stuff all in the registry, firing up Windows services, all the sketchy things that a threat actor might do. Know that there might be some errors in here and all this output, but that is A-OK. -okay. We're just letting it do its thing. Okay, at this point, the Atomic Red team looks like it's doing a little bit of a ping sweep, trying to do some asset identification here, enumerate what's on the network, maybe some lateral movement purposes. But at this point, hey, we've got a whole lot of output, whole lot of data. It was doing everything that it could. And there's some interesting stuff coming through. We could go ahead and control C. We'll stop this now. Now that that has finished, let's go take a look at all the stuff that Blue Spawn, our impromptu EDR, was tracking. Scrolling up to the very, very top, hey, we had the original output when it was just kicking star. Maybe a little bit of noise at the top, hey, zero detections for group policy modification over and over and over again. But as I scroll down, once we are starting to see some of the Atomic Red team in action, again, note how all of this is mapped to the MITRE ATT&CK framework. You could drill down, you could go look at, you could go research, do the due diligence to go see what is doing and what does that technique consist of, what other groups or threat actors commonly use this, and then exactly the output of Blue Spawn and what your EDR should provide. Let me zoom out. What is being accomplished. Hey, looking at these registry keys, getting the actual key, the value, all the technical detail that is associated with this, then you can go do whatever remediation that you want to do, or you know how to further analyze, investigate, and dig into this. Of course, image file execution options, super easy, pretty basic per, uh, persistence mechanisms, ton of these with the accessibility features, and all of these, as you scroll through here, we're seeing over and over and over again. Some interesting other persistence mechanisms were WinLogon, the WinLogon helper, other things that they might set up for hooks and claws, uh, implants into the system here. We're not seeing a whole lot of the other process detections that came from maybe opening up this port scan activity or digging into what netstat or IP config, other things like the who am I command that should trigger, but now you've got that intel and you know these are the gaps in my visibility. My EDR doesn't provide this coverage or it's missing these specific things because Atomic Red Team is going to give you all this output. Output. Blue Spawn is going to give you all this output, at least when you're testing that locally, but you should use this with your EDR. Atomic Red Team is how you can fire it up and see this stuff in action. The lab drills down into exactly this. The same sort of stuff that we were seeing, but maybe, hey, some room for improvement. Things that we know that we should see, but we don't quite yet. What we can do, if you wanted to follow through with this, is clean up all the modifications that the Atomic Red Team tests did. That will just run with uh, invoke again, all tack cleanup, and it'll start to remove all the hooks and claws that it put in there. And if you're interested, you could kind of pair this with Metasploit. 
with Meterpreter, with any other, hey, Threat Actor, Tooling, Cobalt Strike, Covenant, Empire, I don't know, whatever you want, and see what activity is at least this EDR, Blue Spawn, and then by extension, your EDR, going to actually see and detect. They go through here with some other, I don't know, uh, invoke expressions for actually staging more file execution options, IFEO debuggers, all these things that will hook into an application trying to run and start, like you'll see in the sticky keys exploit or small, simple stuff like that. That. Even get system trying to do privilege escalation, working inside a interpreter or metasploit. Uh, not a whole lot coming through here, but interesting that that is definitely something that we should try to have visibility on. Now, look, the core of this, the real value that I wanted to bring to you, hopefully with this video, is Atomic Red Team. You should be using it. You should be trying it out. You should be kicking the tires and validating what your detection methods work and do they work and kind of collaborate here like bring into more of the security community what you're seeing what tooling does or doesn't have visibility here all of this can come from the atomic red team and miter attack framework super important thing to note here look i've been showcasing this on windows but it's not a whole windows world of course linux and mac are things that exist and you probably maybe have some of those endpoints just as well yes you can use the atomic red team for linux and mac and you can fire it up if you're more interested in what red canary is up to maybe i don't know other questions in this faq couldn't antivirus vendors use a tool and render it useless no this sort of stuff is for learning, it is for education, it is for helping test and validate your own security posture, but a lot of this is really, really dynamic. So even these static tests or what it's messing with and playing with, it's brittle as a common word we tend to hear in the security industry. If you're interested more in this sort of stuff, hey, they have a whole lot more in their FAQ. They're talking about their Slack, they're talking about anything that you're interested in here. Uh, would definitely recommend it. Take a look at the Atomic Red Team if you haven't before. But hey, if I may, to get back to the roots of this, again, this last Lab, this activity, this free exercise, what we've been cutting through, is all part of the Pay What You Can courses, intro to security, all the stuff that Black Hills Information Security or anti-siphon training, John Strand and others might be tracking to get you in the know on what the security community is hunting down with MITRE ATT&CK framework and a bunch of other tools, techniques, things that you should get in the weeds on if you're interested in this sort of thing. Take a look, there are so many other things we could be diving into for the intro to security, whether it's Rita, whether it's Sysmon, whether it's cyber deception. That stuff is absolutely incredible because when a threat actor is in the environment, they're gonna start to break down doors and windows here. And if you set up some traps, if you set up some things that they can fall into, they're gonna waste their time and give you more time to detect, to respond, to prevent any further damage. And there's so much in here. Please go take a look and I hope you have fun with it. Hey, that's enough of me rambling. EDRs are a thing. You should probably have one, but you should more importantly, kick the tires, test that thing, and make sure it's doing what you think it's doing, especially if you're paying a pretty coin for it. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching. Take a look at the Pay What You Can courses down below in the video description, and I'll see you in the next video. Like, comment, subscribe. You know the drill.